Greetings, my beloved in Christ. Tonight we're coming into the Word of God, and we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, and going to be reading from verses 8 and 9. We read these words in the uh, New International Version. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and not, not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Here we see that we are saved. We are saved by faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith. God's grace is absolutely beautiful and amazing. But he has decided to set his love upon sinners and take them to heaven. And today, the first time faith was ever mentioned in the Bible was in Genesis chapter 15, verses 5 and 6. That was the first time in the Bible that we ever hear about the word faith. And we read about Abraham that God took him outside into the open air and said, now look towards the heavens and count the stars. If you're able to count them, and he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Your descendants are going to be as many as those stars, God was telling him. And then we see this beautiful verse in verse 6. Then he, that's Abraham, believed in the Lord, and God credited to him for righteousness. He hadn't done anything good. He hadn't done anything bad. He hadn't anything to make him righteous, but God looked at his faith, and because of his faith, he said, he counted him to be righteous. Now, throughout the scripture, the scriptures teach that we are saved by faith. Many scriptures tell us that if we believe in our hearts, upon put our trust in the Son of God, we have faith. And that faith gives us the free gift of eternal life. You all know the scripture, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever, that means you and me, believe on him, we would never perish, but have eternal life. The stages of Abraham that day, as he looked up at the stars of heaven and as he believed God, was that he was made from being unrighteous, not being worthy, to walk with God and enter God's heaven, to be a man who was righteous and justified. So we drop into the New Testament and we read Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified, that means made righteous, like Abraham was, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, therefore, being justified by all the good works you did, for all the money you gave away, for all the prayers you prayed, for all the church attendance that you did, for all your religious activity and all your morality, you are justified and made righteous. God says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So let's look at our text again in Ephesians chapter 2. For Ephesians chapter 2. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Glory to God. Abraham did the only thing he can do without doing anything. And that was believing God. And two, you too can do the only thing that you can do without doing anything else. Just trusting and believing in God. God's grace is so marvelous and so wonderful. Let's look at this word grace. I said we'd look at a few words. This word in the Greek is the word charis. 
It means grace as a total gift and blessing brought to man by Jesus Christ. Grace as a total gift and blessing brought to man by Jesus Christ. It means favor. When God puts his love upon you and his grace upon you, he declares that he favors you. He has favor toward you. God loves you. He loves you and more than loves you. He favors you. And kindness. We see the word actually in verse 7 as well. And we'll look at it later. Uh, Grace is a favor done without expectation of return. Absolute freeness of the loving kindness of God to man. The only motive is the bounty and the free heartedness of the giver. It is a favor that is unearned and unmerited. Isn't this wonderful that the blessed Son of God, so full of grace, left the glory of heaven where he was worshipped, left the glory of heaven where he had supreme authority and all supreme power, and according to the scripture, he let that go. He came to be born in a lonely manger in Bethlehem. He came to be a little boy, a little Jewish boy who walked around Nazareth. He came to subject himself to his mother and father, and he came to serve mankind. Jesus said, as he walked this earth, the Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus gave everything he had. He was rejected. He was despised. He was ill-treated. He was homeless. He was poor. He went through many trials and tribulations, and they ended here by putting him up between heaven and earth, tortured on an old rugged cross. And on that cross, Jesus, who came from heaven for you, in the marvelous grace of God that he was carrying to us, he died for your sins and for mine. He is our Savior. And the Bible says that if we believe in this, if we believe this gospel, we have eternal life. Now, grace stands in stark opposition to works. The two are totally opposite and mutually exclusive. Let me say what I'm, what, let me explain what I mean by that. Romans chapter 3 verse 20 tells us, by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in the sight of God, because through the law is the knowledge of sin. You see, God will not make anybody, count anybody worthy of entering his heaven because of doing good works, keeping the law, keeping all the commandments, doing all the right things, not committing adultery, not stealing, not coveting, not lying, doing all those things by the works of the law, it says, shall no flesh, no person be made righteous. The only thing the law does was it was sent to show us that we're too weak and too sinful to keep it. Now let's read Romans chapter 4. Let's read Romans chapter 4 from verse 4. Now the wages of the worker are not looked on as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. What does that mean? Well, it means this. If you were to go to work and earn your monthly paycheck, you earn it. Nobody gives grace to you. that that You do not get grace from your employer because you earn that wage. So you don't say on your paycheck day, oh, I thank you, gracious boss, for giving me this money when I work for you because that's an obligation. But it says here, however... The one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. That means that if you don't do a thing, you didn't do a finger at work, you for a whole month, you sat in your chair and twiddled your thumbs, then at the payday, when the check came in, you get a big fat check for just sitting there doing nothing. 
That's what it means. That's what this means. It means if you are searching, trying to serve God, trying hard to serve God without faith, doing many good works, that's just your obligation. You don't have any grace. But if you don't do anything else but trust the Son of God, God looks at you and counts you as righteousness. Now, when we come to Christ, we are justified by faith. Straight away, the Scripture tells us that we are given eternal life up front the moment we put our faith and trust in Jesus. God is so generous. He doesn't say, if you're going to do this, or you promise to do that, or he accepts you, and he says, I will give you the free gift of eternal life, and I will give you a new nature if you will trust my son. This message today has has been short, and uh, that's because I intend to send a message on these two verses, these verses in Ephesians every day. My heart wants to see every single one of you knowing that you've got eternal life. My heart wants to see every single one of you that needs to come to Christ and trust him to be in the family of God. My heart is to see that all the saints of God grow in their understanding of Scripture. And I pray for you all. So until tomorrow, when we're going to look and see that this faith that you, this faith that you put your trust in the Lord in is not actually your faith. You didn't work it up, but that too is the gift of God. We're going to look at that. And then we're going to look at the reason why nobody can ever boast to getting into heaven. So, Father, I pray that you would bless this word, this short word tonight, and I pray, God, that you would help me during this week to proclaim the word powerfully in the name of Jesus and to bless people. Amen. In his name I pray. And my friend, if you've got any comments, please send them. If you've got any questions, please send them. If you've got any prayer requests, please send them. I am your servant for Jesus' sake, and I want to bless you. May God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Until we see each other tomorrow, God bless you.